In this Python tutorial, we will make a GUI application with checkbox. Let's briefly look at how the application works. Afterwards, I will redo the project with you. I enter name, surname and gender values. When I click on the button, a text file is created. The entered data is saved to a text file. Now let's start doing the project together step by step. To support us, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the video. Let's start. I will transfer the PY Simple GUI library. You can transfer the library using this code. I import the library. I will create a list for the objects in the application. I add text and input objects to the list. I create a variable for the window. I am sending the title, list and size values to the window function. I create an infinite while loop with true. I need event and values variables. I match these values with the read function. You will soon understand how these variables are used. I print the variables to the console screen. If the variable is close and exit, I end the while loop with the break command. I'm closing the window. I created a window containing text and input objects. I create text and input objects for the surname. I added the objects for name and surname. Now I will add the checkbox object. I create checkbox objects for male and female. Checkbox objects have been added to the window. Now I will create another button and text object. I will use the text object to show application problems. For example, if the male and female checkbox objects are selected together, the operation cannot be performed. I added all the objects to the window. I need to access the values of the objects I added. I will determine key values to access input, checkbox and text objects. I can access the values in the object using these keys. I create gender and X variables. I will set the gender variable as female or male according to the checkbox value. I will set the X variable equal to 1 in undesirable situations in the program. For example, if the button is clicked without selecting the male or female checkbox objects, no action will be taken. You will understand better how to use it soon. If male and female checkbox objects are both selected, I will issue a warning message. I can access the text object using the key value. I send the warning text to the update function. 
I set the x variable to 1. We will use the variable x in an if query in a moment. You can think of the program as a stopping variable. Let's test the application. I enter the name and surname values. When both checkbox objects are selected, the warning message is shown in the text object. If both female and male checkbox objects are not selected, I will issue a warning message again. I set the x variable to 1 again. Let's try the application. I enter the name and surname values. When I do not select the checkbox objects, the warning message is published in the text object. When I select both, the warning message is shown again. If the male value is true and the female value is false, I set the gender variable to male. If the female value is true and the male value is false, I set the gender variable to female. If the button is clicked and the x value is 0, that is, there is no violation, I create a text file named employees. I can write data to the text file using the write function. I write the name, surname and gender values entered by the user to the file. I edit the text object using the update function. I set the gender variable to empty. Finally, I close the file. Let's test the application. I enter the values. The button is currently dysfunctional because I didn't pay attention to the lowercase letters in the values value. Make sure the names match exactly. I enter the values. When I click on the button, a text file is created. The data I enter is saved to the file. You can enter more than one data. In the next video, I will make an example of the radio element. To support us, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the video.